Hey, this is Andy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase it all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. We are very excited to kick off our inaugural case study episode. Yes, this is a new series we're going to be doing in our story episode. So if you guys are new, we do every other episode as education or stories. Typically for our stories, we do a bunch of stories on a certain topic um, from a lot of athletic trainers. Um, But for our case study, we're going to take one story and dive a little bit deeper into a specific scenario, what happened, and then the aftermath. Specifically for this week, we are super excited because... Um, we are bringing on one of our good friends, Allison. I did promise her I would do that. (laughs) Um, Allison is um, an athletic trainer in the collegiate setting, and she is willing to share her experience on our podcast. But before we get into it, I do want to give a little bit of a warning because this is a, especially as this first case study episode, we do talk about a CPR scenario, um, Mm -hmm. a scenario where the patient did not make it. So this is a very heavy episode. So just as a warning before you listen to this, I just wanted to give that heads up. Yep. However, in light of the situation, we all agree that it is something that needs to be shared. Um, One, two, needs to be heard. And also something that I think that we don't talk about enough. Absolutely. It's one of those things that you're, again, like you said, no one really talks about, uh, talks about it that often. And, you know, and I believe we bring it up in our conversation with Allison is, you know, you always hear, you know, as you should about like the good, like the good outcomes and the positive ending. But, you know, the, the, this other side of having to deal with, Hey, the outcome wasn't as positive as we were shooting for, you know, how do we deal with that next? And I think it, it's going to tie in nice with our, our story episode of, okay, now how do you deal with just that emotion and the adrenaline and all that, that goes, that comes with an emergency situation? Because again, you, you talk about all the stuff to prepare you for the emergency, but I think as students and, you know, as we go on through our careers, no one really talks about the, okay, how do you manage the stuff you weren't taught in school, you know, about those situations? Right. So you'll hear all of that um, throughout the episode, and then we'll talk more at the end about the stories that we gathered for um, that you'll hear in two weeks. Yep. So without further ado, let's hear Allison's story. Okay. So uh, probably like the most quintessential Sunday afternoon for a baseball doubleheader, right? And uh Ironically enough, it was my first baseball coverage of the semester. And um, my colleagues had had covered it up to that point. And so um, it was it was either in between innings or in the middle of an inning. And um, I heard some bustling behind our backstop. And um, one of my other student athletes just called my name. And I, I just, I remember making eye contact with her and she just said, um, somebody behind their dugout just collapsed complaining of chest pains. And so I, you know, did my, grab my AED, ran over. And by the time I got there, he was already down on the ground. Um, come to find out it was a parent from the other team. Um, he was already down on the ground. Another fan was already um, performing CPR. Another fan was already on the phone with 911. Um, as I'm running over and I see what's happening, I'm already opening up my AED before I even get there. Um, and once I got there, I, I helped put the pads on. And within, we found out we got the data from the AED within 38 seconds. He was, he was shocked. Um, and um, compressions continued. There was another parent there. I offered to jump in and do, like, at the end of the cycle, the gentleman said he was fine. 
by that time, borough police had arrived, our public safety had arrived, and not too far behind that, EMS, paramedics, everybody came. Um, and at that point, the game hadn't been stopped yet. So once everybody else responded, and I kind of wasn't needed at that point, aside from my AED being on the person, um, I kind of just went back to see what was going on with the game. And by that time, mm-hmm. finally, they had called time. They realized that like this wasn't just a fluke, right? Yeah. Um, and so, of course, like everybody in our administrative like team or umbrella, you know, everybody did in hindsight, everybody did exactly what they were supposed to do. Our emergency action plan was executed exactly the way it was supposed to be executed. Whether the other fans knew it or not, like they did exactly what was supposed to happen. And um, I think at that point, the athlete had come off the field and was, was watching everything and um since everybody else had sort of assumed their roles i just assumed the role the only other role i knew how to fill which was comfort him you know Mm -hmm. um and i just approached him i introduced myself and i said you don't know me but i'm the athletic trainer the host athletic trainer and i'm here to help you i'm here for you and I tried, to, he, he was asking questions or just, you know, he, he just seemed very unclear. I mean, obviously very panicked, very unclear as to what was going on. And I was trying to explain the best I could. Again, educate, right? We lead with education. Yep. And I was just trying to lead with as objective, like the, the most objective communication that I could um, and educative or um, educational information that I could. And, and um, we finally got his mother on the phone. I was talking to the mother to do explain the same thing, and I think that was in the moment. Of course, you know, I, I, I keep saying we were we're trained to do these things, right? We have these skills, we yeah. have these learned skills, and we're prepared to use them. That's exactly what we're trained to do. Mm-hmm. And so, none of that was an issue. Like that, like I said, it all it all was executed exactly the way it's supposed to be executed. Um. And I, you don't realize how long a two minute cycle is until you're sitting yeah. there watching it and, you know, for the people doing it. Um, and those two minute cycles seemed like forever. Um, and eventually they stabilized them enough and were able to transport them. And again, back and forth on the phone with the mother and, and making sure the kid was, was taken care of and, and transported as well and not left alone. And, um, Again, once once it sort of once the crowd dispersed, eventually they just called the game too. They 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 just canceled the game, um, and people were still hanging around. But I just I keep referring it to or referring to it as the um, like adrenaline hangover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you're just on such autopilot, and you're just you know tunnel vision you're doing your job and all of a sudden like you come down off of that and like yeah it's it, you know it's i'm sure it's a combination of shock and just disbelief and, and like truly chemical right like yeah. um <clears throat> i debriefed with our public safety director or associate director and then eventually my sports medicine director met up with me and she just sent me home like you know just just get out (laughs) do what you got to do and um i just got in my car and cried i didn't know i didn't know what else to do you know i didn't know what else to do like there was again such emotion um Mm -hmm. and such a combination of feelings um again part 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 my own like partially my own adrenaline high kind of coming off or, or wearing off but also like knowing or just imagining what that particular student athlete and his family now has to face and what his teammates have to face and what his coaches have to face. And then alternatively, you know, the mirror, the mirror image of that is my coaching staff and my student athletes and and their parents. Um, Because, you know, I think our coach said it best, like everybody there, I think realized that that could have been anybody 
at yeah. any point in their lives, right? Like we've all, like whether it was coaches, players, whatever, like everybody could put themselves in those shoes. Um, and I think for at least my, my camp, I think that was probably the most sobering and humbling thought and realization. But again, it, it left me with a lot of questions like, you know, okay, like what now, right? Where does, yeah. and the kid was not local, right? They were the visiting team. Um, and even though they were the visiting team, he lived somewhere completely different too. So, mm -hmm. you know, when can the family get here? When, what does that look yeah. like? What, uh, who's like, let's provide them with transportation. Let's get them, you know, um, board them somewhere. Like what, you know, they already have to deal with so much. How can we, how can we take those decisions off of their plate? Um, yeah. how do we feed them? You know, like, the, like these are the, the thoughts that were going through my mind. And I was, I was communicating with my administrator to say like, Oh, and this, you know, I just thought of this. I want to make sure that this is taken care of. And he's like, Allison, yes, we got it. It's just <laughs> relax. Um, but at the same time, like, and again, I know I'm, I'm, I can only assume that generally speaking, I think as athletic trainers, we we're, we, we are problem solvers, right? We're healers, we're fixers. So, uh, you know, in the rare moments when we do get to sit still and reflect and <laughs> contemplate, right? Like we're still, the wheels are still turning and we're still wondering how we can fix things and help people. And um, so I think that was, that was a lot of my energy. Um, and I think I said too, in the seven days following the incident, I think I probably had more therapy <laughs> from, from a few different resources um, than I have in probably like the last, like, you name it, like weeks, months, years, right? Like it was, and it was one of the most like, on one hand, it was like jarring to think like, oh man, I'm one of those people who needs this help right now. Mm. Right. And it was, it was, and again, I, I, that's my own, that's in my own head, right? Like, of course it's okay to ask for help. Of course. Like again, the smart part of my brain knows that this is exactly why these systems are in place. Right. Um, but you know, how often do, are, are we actually the ones taking advantage of those, right? We're always the ones referring everybody else. And mm -hmm. so um, I I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm, I'm surrounded by a very supportive department staff. I'm su supported by a very su um, uh, wonderful administrative staff, mm -hmm. um, direct supervisors, um, department psychologist, um, personal psychologist, um, other other friends and acquaintances who are are in mental health professions who um, were more than happy to just be sounding boards and and supports uh, support systems um, and I'm I, I I found myself in my reflection eventually just just overwhelmed with such gratitude right for um, for, for for those opportunities and those and those uh, the accessibility to those resources, but also just just you know where I am in my own life, right? Like I'm like a, like we said, like that could have been anybody at any time, and mm -hmm. it's not. It wasn't me, right? And it wasn't my family. Ironically enough, it was my father's birthday the very next day, and so I had oh, wow. to call him. I I, I called him, and uh, it was emotional. Again, I wasn't expecting it to take the turn that it did. Um, I wasn't really expecting to tell him what had happened, but it came up in conversation. And then that's when I got a little emotional. He got a little emotional. And conveniently for both of us, he was actually preoccupied with something else that was going on on his end. So um, it was a, okay, I'm glad you're okay. Happy birthday. I love you. <laughs> we'll talk later, right? Um, and I was like, yeah, we'll talk later. Um, so that was a weird, that was a weird kind of conversation for me to have. Mm -hmm. Um, cause again, it's not something that you want to think about. It's not something that people tend to think about. Um, mm -hmm. and here I, I had no choice, but to think about it. Um, but again, just, just uh, gratitude. I, 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 I came out of this situation with a lot of gratitude. You know, I, I again, the more the more like the more data we collected from the AED or the more debriefing we've done or 
just just uh, discussions. Um, I'm trying to find solace in the fact that we gave him the best fighting chance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, he could have been in his car on the way to the game. He could have been in mm-hmm. the parking lot. He could have been at CVS or Dunkin' Donuts or wherever, right? And he wasn't. He was right there. And, you know, that response was under, I mean, it was almost instantaneous, right? And so mm-hmm. if anybody had a chance, it was him yeah. on paper, right? Um, mm-hmm. So um, I'm, I'm trying, like anytime I feel myself kind of going down that, like a, a sort of dark rabbit hole, um, I, I try to remind myself of that. We prep. We we prep. We are there for that reason, and we executed. At the beginning of that week, I didn't know sort of where I was or who I was or what I was going to do. Like I, I just didn't even know what my capacity was. Like it was a really, excuse me, really really odd place to be um, mentally and emotionally. But I had a, a bit of a breakthrough in in one of my therapy sessions where where it was it was again that sort of fine piece in the fact that we did our best and it's okay it's okay like it just goes to show that you can do everything exactly the way it's supposed to happen and it doesn't always work out you know i think that's a that's a pretty pretty uh pretty good metaphor for for life too you know and and Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm finding finding some peace in that as well you know learning to approach things with a little bit more grace and as we always say too, it's one of those things that you ne- you hope you never have to utilize, right? Um, Absolutely. At the same now, like, or at the same, or at the same time now, I feel like, I feel like now I'm ready for anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, all right, you know, I've got almost two decades of of clinical athletic training under my belt, and now this, and I'm like, all right, all right, I've arrived. Here we go, right? Um, <laughs> And not in a, in a, in a like arrogant or cocky way, but mm-hmm. like a, a confident way, right? Like, like yeah. to be able to, you know, you like you, I don't know about y'all, but I constantly sit on a sideline and like think about hypothetical scenarios and like what ifs, right? Um, and this is just one more what if, like, yeah. now I know exactly how I'm going to respond. Now I know exactly what it feels like. I, now I can, pre- like, I'm prepared for that. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I can't help but feel like I'm a better clinician now because of it, right? Um, again, I, it won't make anything any easier, right? Mm-hmm. In, in thinking about what had happened or, or, or what um, might come to be in the future. But um, there's still just a different mental preparation piece to it that I think I don't want to say it's comforting because it's certainly not comforting, but like, yeah, maybe reassuring. So yeah, I don't, I don't, um, that's sort of a, the summary of the incident. And then like, again, that processing afterwards. Um, Would you say that you felt the adrenaline come down like right after when you said you, before they called the game, when you had kind of gone back to the, dug out or do you would you say that it really hit you like when you went out to your car so before they had called the game again i was still just in like i thought a traitor mode right like Mm because in my mind i was like yeah okay i know the severity of what's going on back here but if the coaches and the umpires don't really know or like if they're going to continue on with this game then I either have to be present for this game or I need to alert them that this needs to shut down. Um, Mm -hmm. And so by the time I made my way back around to like our backstop or our dugout where I would access the field to talk to anybody, um, Mm -hmm. they were already having a conference, like the, the umpires and the, and the coaches were already having a conference. So play had been suspended at that point and it did not resume. I think at that point they realized what was happening. And then I made my way back over. But like I said, by that time, that was when um, the EMTs and the paramedics were arriving. So, so from a, from a CPR, you know, life-saving perspective, like my services were no longer needed. 
And that's when I just swooped in and grabbed the kid. So anyway, I was trying to stay calm for him. I was trying to stay calm for his mom, um, even mm -hmm. though this was something that was, I mean, again, off of paper from a, like in a practical sense was completely foreign to me, right? Physically, mm -hmm. emotionally. And I think it wasn't until the ambulance actually drove away because mm -hmm. it took them, a, I mean, it took them, a, he was stable enough to get him onto the ambulance and then he must have crashed again because it took them a little while to, to pull out. Um, and it wasn't until they pulled away. And I was, that's when I was standing there with one of my administrators and my, my public safety associate director. And um, I don't, it wasn't until like, there was definitely like this rush. Mm -hmm. Like I got punched in the gut or like, mm -hmm it was like I got the wind knocked out of me or like I had just like gotten like some like, you know, just experienced some sort of like violent, acute, like vomiting or something like that. Like, the, like, you know, like that exhaustion, you're just yeah. completely wiped. That was kind of the sensation that it was. Um, and that didn't go, that, that physical sensation didn't go away for days for me. Um, and it wasn't until, I mean, the director was one or the, the, the public safety director was the one who said like, y'all did everything right. It wasn't until he said that, that I think like I was holding it together. I was holding it together, holding it together. And then he said that. And then like, I just had, to, I walked away. Like I had to, I took a few steps down a sidewalk and I just, I just like, hands on my knees, like just lost it. Um, and again, got myself together enough. Like I didn't want my kids to see me like that. I didn't want my staff to see me like that. I didn't want their kids to see me like that. I mean, granted, they didn't know who I was, but um, so then I kind of, you know, got that athletic trainer face back on. Um, and then I think I got a little emotional too when, when my sports medicine director approached me. You know, we've worked together a very long time. And so she's she's more like family, too. And so there was that that was almost a trigger to, like, get emotional. Like, it, it, it was just like a like a cue to be like it was OK to be vulnerable in that moment. Right. And and um, that's I, I think that that's when she was like, OK, like I was like, oh, I'll clean up. I'll do this. And she goes, no, just just I, I'll take care of it. Just go go home, be with your family, you know, get on the phone, talk to your friends, like call your therapist or call our therapist or, you know, you have all these reasons, like reminding me that I have resources. And, um, mm -hmm. I did exactly that. Like I, like I, I had, you know, I, I'll, I'll never forget it too. I had, it was a sunny day. I had a hat on and, and I had sunglasses. And so I had, I had it all on and I had to walk into our field house to go to my office to get my car keys and then walk out. And there were student athletes in our lobby. And I just kept my head down and kept walking. And that's just, that, that's not like me either. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt, it didn't feel good to do that. Um, but I knew that I had to, like it was total, it was completely out of self-preservation, right? And just survival mode mm -hmm. at that point for me. Um, and I couldn't get to my car fast enough. And that's when, like, that's when I really just let it all out because I felt like I could, at least more so than mm -hmm. anywhere yeah. else. And so luckily I don't have a very far drive home either. So I was able to get myself mm -hmm. home. And before I even got out of the car, I was on the phone with a social worker friend of mine or a pastor friend of mine, or, you know, I, I like I, I went down my list of people, like my people, right, first. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the psychologist, right? Because I needed to just get, I felt like I needed to like sort of sort through my own emotions first with people who knew me and um, even other athletic trainers. I was like, I was supposed to have dinner with some athletic trainer friends that night. And I was like, I need y'all to know what just happened. And I might try to back out of it. And I need you to not let me back out of it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know, I don't care what we all, like what we do tonight, but like, let's 
just make me don't let me back out like make me Mm -hmm. hang out wherever um and they were great too right like i got kidnapped basically which was awesome (laughs) but um but again it's a weird place to be when you're usually the one taking care of everybody else and then suddenly you have this whole camp of people who are at the ready to take care of you that was a pretty humbling experience too at what point did you find out that he didn't make it? Um, probably within an hour, hour and a half after I got home. Wow. The game started at 1130. What, uh, what helped you kind of start that process, like start the beginnings of processing it or the grieving process? I, 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 I think it started the minute my public safety director said you did everything right. Like with that reassurance, that's when it started for me. Because I think, you know, we're so focused typically on positive patient outcomes, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's what drives us. That's what we do. And, um, you know, to, to be faced with the reality that at that point, when he said that, you know, you're faced with the reality that, yeah, you did the best you could and it's, it's out of your hands now. Um, to like that started to prepare me for the, 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 the negative outcome, I think. But mm-hmm. again, by that reassurance and also just, I think the more I told the story or like the more I, I, tried to recount what had happened. I think that helped me kind of process through that, that sort of emotional uh, roller coaster or even like energetic roller coaster, right? Like the adrenaline rush or the, the anxiety or the, the tension, just, just, you know, you're on high alert, you're hypervigilant, you're just tense, right? You're physically tense. You're at the ready that, uh, you know, that, 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 um, the definition of fight or flight right like it was this this Mm -hmm. pure purely sympathetic nervous system response right um and i think the more i told or the more i talked about it i think uh, the better acclimated i became to my physiological response. Mm-hmm. And so I think from a physiological standpoint, I think that helped me from, from that perspective. Then from like the emotional perspective, I think it was, again, I keep coming back to the fact that it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, right? Or that yeah. you like, and so no, again, tell I, it's still, I still come back to that to the fact that he was in the best place he could possibly be. Um, And so I think um, the validation that I was able to get from all of the resources that I spoke with, you know, and again, that reassurance, that validation, um, eventually I got to circle back with some of our public safety officers who had previously been in situations like that. Um, Mm -hmm. and they were incredible when, once they found out that that was the first time I had ever been in a situation like that, they were, our staff was awesome. Like they're awesome. You know, they wanted to make sure that I was okay. They checked up on me. They wanted to like, if, if, you know, they're, they're the ones emailing me and contacting me. You know, if, if, if you ever want to just talk, if you ever need anything, you let us know. I certainly think it's an ongoing process, but I think keeping in mind that, this is this is this is what we do and this is why we do it and it's it's so much you know we we prepare to be in control of so many things right and it's it was and i think that's part of it too right like we're again by trade we are we are we are prepared all the time right like Mm -hmm. we overpack right like we we are like the the we're just ready for anything and Um, you don't ever want to think about like, what if we're not 
you know, like, and so it's, it's, I think the more, like the more grace I allow myself to, I think that helps me process through it as well. I think I talked to like two or three different therapists every single day Mm -hmm. for like four days straight, like every single day, which again, in my life, Mm -hmm. I have never done that. It was probably the most intensive therapy I've ever had in my life. And it was like, Mm -hmm. so similar, but different, right? Everybody, like everybody offered a different, a different piece of the puzzle. And I was the connecting link between all of them. Like none of them knew each other. None of it. Like it was, it was Mm -hmm. just this, this beautiful web of, of healing, right? Like I kept telling myself, like, this isn't about me, right? Like if I felt myself getting caught up with my own emotions, like this isn't about me. But at the same time, one of my therapists reminded me that like, sure, this isn't like the incident didn't happen to you, but it was still traumatic to you, right? Like it's still Mm -hmm. something that your body experienced. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you owe it to yourself to acknowledge that you owe it to yourself to process through that. And like, let's, let's figure this out together. Right. Like it was a, um, and of course, you know, novice psychoanalysis of myself, like I was just deflecting some more, right. Who wants to, who wants to really work on that stuff. Right. You know, I think it's made me more open to working on other things that are going like that, that we're going on. I think it helped make other therapy sessions more productive. Right. Like it's, it's, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I believe too that like the universe works in mysterious ways, right? Like there's a reason that that was my first baseball game of the semester, Mm -hmm. right? Like there was a reason I was there. There was a reason why I was on that game. Um, And again, I recognize too that it's affecting, I I don't even know how many people were there, but like it's affecting all of them in all different ways, right? Like Mm -hmm. we were all witness to that and it'll all, Mm -hmm. it'll affect all of us in all different ways. So, um, I kind of felt guilty for feeling like I needed help because I didn't feel like I was even the most, like I wasn't the most closely affected. Right. And I think that was part of it too. Like I felt guilty that I felt so consumed by it. Um, Cause I didn't feel like I necessarily had a place to feel that kind of, or, or, or the, the depth of that emotion. Um, but I did. And so I had to, I couldn't ignore that. That was, it was, it was too much. Um, I don't know. I I don't even know if that answered your question, Randy. I'm sorry. No, that was perfect. So like in this, in this case, you were, you were able to at least get away for a little bit before you returned to, you know, to work. What was it kind of like those first maybe day or so of like, okay, now I'm back into work, you know, after beginning that process? what was it like coming back to work? Yeah. Is that the question? Um, yeah. So as it, as it were, my first day back, I covered a baseball game. Hmm. And I did so cautiously. Um, I was sort of, I was nervous. I didn't know how I was going to mm-hmm. respond to it, but at the same time, um, like I, I was there, you know, hours ahead of time, right? Like, like we have our routines, we, we do our stuff, mm-hmm. we do our prep, we, we prep for the prep, right? Like there's a, there's a lot that goes on. And, um, I had gotten there even earlier that day and I, I made it a point to seek out my head coach. And that was the first I had seen him since it happened and I saw a couple players and um even other athletes who weren't there who didn't necessarily know what had happened um but noticed that I hadn't been around um I wasn't expecting some of my like I wasn't expecting people to notice Mm -hmm. that I was out um especially if they didn't know what had happened but when I when I I was able to talk to my head coach and he and I debriefed and kind of consoled each other a bit and um, reassured and acknowledged each other, um, I think that kind of set a tone for me. I felt um, again I didn't I didn't change my prep routine at all. Like I just went about my business and 
it felt as though, and I didn't realize this at the time, but, you know, in hindsight, I think, or as the games kind of got started, it, it was as if that provided me with the closure I think I needed in that moment too. Um, Cause there I was picking right back up with the same people who had been there and experienced this all with me essentially. Um, and I think there was a bit of acknowledgement between all of us um, without saying it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I got, I got a very, very warm, welcoming from our entire team not that i i mean not that i i don't normally but it was it was it was palpably extra right like it was yeah. it was it was this very very heartfelt like like one of my one of my guys just didn't say a word just came up to me and like gave me this massive bear hug and just said i appreciate you and again, I know he appreciates me on a good day, right? Like it doesn't like yeah. he wasn't saying anything or sharing anything that I didn't already know or or think, but again, it was this conscious acknowledgement of each other and our our like shared experience in that in that mm -hmm. in that, you know, in that moment. And um I I felt myself like able to exhale like before the game even started. Like I it was just a all right, let's do this. We're back. And so I found now that I've covered, I, I, I've covered a couple baseball games now. Um, and it, I, I don't, I don't find myself thinking about it. Of course, that first day, like you just keep um, thinking about it. And of course too, like, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but you know, every time you close your eyes, you just, you just re, play everything right yeah. and what you know what could i have done differently or what if i had done something differently but also just the visual right it just replays and replays and mm -hmm. replays i actually had a moment yesterday i was covering a game on a different field that kind of looks up at the baseball field and mm -hmm. um from my vantage point at that other game i could see the spot on the sidewalk where we were mm-hmm and so those are the moments that like that's the vantage point that grabs me the most now. Like every once in a while, and it's 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 every once in a while where like I'll be covering a practice or covering another game, and I'm just so happen to glance up, and and it I'll get like a flash. But and that was totally tangential, Randy, and I'm sorry, but um, oh, you're good. I think in answer to your 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 original question, go, going back to work, that first day was emotional for me, but not in a not in a sloppy way. Like, mm -hmm. I think emotions can be a little sloppy sometimes and, and not like it's a bad thing. It just is what it is. But like, it was, it was a very like validating mm -hmm. emotional experience. I think, for, like I said, for everybody involved. And then I think as, as sort of word got out, coaches, staff, um, even student athletes, like, I had some people reach out that I would not have, I would not have expected to reach mm -hmm. out. And unfortunately, I think this has been this, this like heightened awareness and heightened appreciation has, it's obviously been in the forefront recently, given, you know, what had happened with DeMar Hamlin, but mm -hmm. it's just, like, again, from my vantage point, like from, you know, from my setting, like, not to say I told you so, but like, you know, if there was any question before, like, we're not just here to mm -hmm. fill up water bottles and tie ice bags and tape ankles, right? Like, that's, like, don't ask, don't ask me for a massage on my massage table. Like, cut it, cut it. Like, you know, I, that's, that's, I think now I, I, I'm, and again, I have, I have, I have great, I have a great staff, I have a great department. Um, and I've been there a long time. I have, I have pretty good relationships with everybody there, but, um, again, I can't help but feel like this is another opportunity for me at least to advocate for not only myself, but for the profession, right. And, and to educate and just, just reinforce why we're there and what we do and what we're capable of and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the scope of our practice, right. Like, 
I mean, we all know it, right? It's not a surprise. We, 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 we know stereotypically what people like the general public thinks we do. Right. And it's, it's a common mm-hmm. misconception, but, and yes, the NFL highlighted that much better, right? Like again, positive outcome, uh, yeah. you know, direct link, the athletic trainers are the first responders, right? Like, yes, very, very, very worthy acknowledgements. Right. But again, the reality of uh, like, of it is that like this stuff happens and mm-hmm. we are the first responders and, and, you know, it's not in the NFL. It's not in professional sports. It's, it's mm-hmm. a lot of fans. It's a lot of youth yeah. athletes. It's a lot like I'm using this too, as an opportunity to remind my coaches, like, this is exactly why we want everybody to be certified in first aid and CPR. And, mm-hmm. and this is exactly why, because it, it's not going to be where we think it's going to be. It's not going to happen where we think it's going to yeah. happen. It's going to happen in the grocery store. It's going to happen, you know, in CVS or in Dunkin' Donuts, right? Um, mm-hmm. Right. But I find myself like that's, those are the conversations that I'm starting to have. Those are like, that's the, that's the dialogue I'm starting to, um, or the messaging that I'm starting to, to generate because, mm-hmm. you know, you can only ask me how I'm doing so many times, right? Um, or, or, or like you can only crack jokes about filling water bottles or, you know, tape an ankle so many times. Like I don't, I'm, I'm over that, right? Like I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I didn't want to hear it before and I certainly don't want to hear it now. Um, yeah. Right. It just reinforces the fact too that we're, we, we should think of our, like we're part of a community. No matter where we are, we're part of a community, mm-hmm. right? And and again, yes, we're athletic trainers. We're, we, we, we problem solve and we take care of people. But like, I want to, I want more people to feel that way. I want more people to approach situations that way. Right. Maybe that's, that's maybe, maybe I have some rose colored glasses on, but like, I think we could do so much better and be so much more prepared. Um, so that's where I see, that's where I see myself now is, is just being far more ready and willing to have those conversations even though i'm sure some of my some 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 people don't want to hear it or have those conversations or are terrified to think of themselves being in those situations but Mm -hmm. you know again that's why we do what we do yep if there's any silver lining from that like we talked about it is that this totally needs to be talked about more. You, yes. you, it's always going to be, you're always going to be able to find someone who wants to talk about the person who lived or the situation that they were the hero or yep. that everything went right and everything yep. came out right. But what if you do everything right and it doesn't work yeah. out? Yeah. I just, it wasn't in the, you know, in the cards. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Definitely needs to be talked about more and, you know, going into that process, you know, everyone's going to experience it differently and everyone's going to have their own individual experience and what they're going to feel. So I thought that was really great, you know, with our conversation is we got to hear her individual response and perspective and the experience that happened to her. So hopefully, you know, it can help resonate with others and like, oh, I kind of had something similar or, Oh, I didn't experience that, but it's interesting to hear someone else have it, have viewed it this way. Mm-hmm. So we do have stories that go along with this because one of our prompts was on Instagram um, was how do you deal with the stress after the adrenaline dump? Like we talk about going into AT mode, athletic trainer mode, and then afterwards you just kind of realize like, wow, that was really scary or whatever you, you know, whatever you realize and you get that adrenaline come down. We do have five pages of stories that we can't wait to share and of just athletic trainers sharing their experiences of how they dealt with that stress or different emergency scenarios that they had to, um, that they had to, um, respond to. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Again, that's going to be in two weeks. Next week, we will go back to our education episode as normal. And then if you guys would like to um, reach out for a story episode, you can always email us at atcorners at gmail.com or go to our Instagram where we prompt midweek in our Instagram stories. 
And then lastly, we do have a Facebook group where you can talk about this episode or you can post um, in our Facebook group about other athletic training related topics, network with other clinicians. That is facebook.com slash group slash AT Corner Podcast. And I think that's all I have. Do you have anything else, Randy? That was perfect. Thank you for helping us showcase athletic training behind the tape. Bye.